What's up, Valley Creek students, and welcome to Student Circles. We're in the middle of a series called The Ancient Future, Practicing the Way of Jesus, where we've been learning what it means to live the way Jesus lived by following the people who went before us. This week, we learned about our purpose, to live passionately on mission. In other words, to share the hope of Jesus with the world around us. That's important because our purpose, the reason we were created, doesn't start when we start college, or when we start a career, it started when we said yes to following Jesus. Check this out. You see, the way of Jesus is the way of passionate mission. If you look at God, you look at his kingdom, you look at those who have gone before us, you can't help but come to the conclusion that the entire kingdom is on a mission with passion. Jesus lived a life of mission. And whenever the Bible talks about Jesus of Nazareth, it's talking about his humanity. Remember, Jesus is fully God and he's fully man. But when he came to this earth, he left his divine be power behind and he did everything as a man anointed by the spirit of the living God. The reason this is important is because if Jesus did everything because he was God and then he tells you to practice his ways, he's setting you up for failure. But he did everything as a man empowered by the same Holy Spirit that's available to you today so you can actually do the exact same things that he did which was what? To live a life of mission going around, destroying the works of the devil and releasing the kingdom of God. You see, the church doesn't have a mission. The mission has a church. God didn't create a church and then say, what should I do with them? I know, let's make them busy with a mission. He had a mission. And so he birthed the church to walk out that mission. You wanna talk about privilege? You want to talk about responsibility. You want to talk about authority, the fact that God believes in you so much that he would entrust you with the mission of bringing his kingdom to this earth. So can I just ask you a really honest question? Are you engaged in the mission of God in any way? In any way? Do you give, serve, invite, bless, encourage, build up, strengthen? I mean, in any way, are you a part of the ancient path created purpose for your life? See, we all have to learn how to get off of the path of the world and get onto the ways of God. Even the disciples, when Jesus first calls them, remember when, come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. It does not say, follow me so you can have eternal life. It doesn't say, follow me and you'll get to heaven someday. It doesn't say, follow me and I will make everything easy and convenient and comfortable. He says, follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. In other words, he says, you're on the mission of me, myself and I, and I'm gonna help you get on the mission of God because I came to restore your identity, your relationship, and your purpose. And the disciples didn't have a clue how to do this. And I get it, some of you are sitting here and you're like, yeah, but bro, you have no idea what the season's been like. I'm grieving, I'm heavy, I'm worn out, I'm tired, I'm sad, I've been beat down. It's been, a, I know, it's been a lot for everybody, but hear me, you don't get to take a pause on your purpose. You don't get to take a break from why you're even on this earth in the first place. And I get it, the mission of God. You're like, what does that mean? Does that mean I have to serve a church or does that mean I have to do? It can mean so many different things, but there's principles that are the same. Practicing the way of Jesus is about serving, building and inviting. Serve, for even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. The disciples are arguing who's going to sit on the right and the left hand side of Jesus in his glory. Which of them is going to be the greatest? And he says, hey, 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 let me clarify this for you. Even I didn't come to be served. I came to serve and to give my entire life away. So if you're actually going to follow me and practice my way, the ancient path is about being a servant. Come on. In the kingdom, you are never the center of your purpose. Listen, for this cause you were born, for this cause you have come into this world. 
Think of Jesus. For the joy before him endured the cross. In other words, when he could have given up, when it got hard, when it got inconvenient, he could have checked out. No, no, no. He was like, this is why I'm here. So when they insulted and persecuted him, this is why I'm here. When they started to lash his body with lash after lash that literally tore the flesh off his body, this is why I'm here. When they beat him with rods and broke down his body, this is why I'm here. When they drove nails through his hands and, and nails through his feet on that cross, this is why I'm here. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Second thing is just build. Build. We're called to be builders. It was he, Jesus, who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, ready? To prepare God's people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. This is really important if you can catch this. It was Jesus who gave the church, church leadership, to prepare or equip in the original language, that word means to mend or repair. Uh, mend or repair as if thinking a term of an old fishing net. When Peter would fish, he would have a big net, he would throw it out, and when he'd pull it back in, the net would close and it would catch all the fish. But if there were holes in that net, when he would throw it out and he would catch the fish and pull them in, the fish would swim out the hole, leaving him ineffective. So what this word is telling us is that God has given church leadership to us to mend or repair the tears in our soul, the tears in our life, the tears in our thinking, the tears in who we are so that we can once again be tossed back out into the world and be fishers of men and catch fish on mission and purpose with God. And, and what you need to see in this is that it is so important to value the voice of the church leaders that God has given to you. I think in this last season, we've become so globally connected and there's so much coming at us. There's so much good stuff out there. Podcasts and sermons and messages and books and courses and curriculums and Bible studies and reading plans, all that's amazing. Please use it, invest in yourself, follow Jesus, build and strengthen your own soul but don't do it in replacement of the voice of the church leaders that God has given to you. You say, well, but I, I love all these other things. Those things are great, but hear me, those people don't love you like we do. Those people aren't praying for you like we do. Those people aren't trying to lead you somewhere like we are. And those people won't have to give an account to God for your life the way that we will. And then we have to invite. Follow me as I follow Christ. Jesus was always inviting. This is Paul. He's saying, I'm following Jesus. So come on, follow me on this ancient path. As followers of the way, we should be inviting. Inviting people to what? Everything. Inviting people to church. Inviting people to our circle. Inviting people to our serve team. Inviting people into our lives, into our home. Inviting people to share their story. Inviting people to hear our story. Come on, when was the last time you invited anybody to anything that had to do with Jesus? You say, why? Because when you're inviting and you're sharing your story and you're engaging in the mission of God, it keeps the gospel alive in your heart. It reminds you that I was lost and I'm found. I was dead. I'm alive. I was on the mission of me, myself, and I. But God gave me back my purpose. That's why I'm here. And if I stop doing this, I forget what Jesus did for me. Come on. If you're on a serve team, if you're leading, if you're doing, are you doing it with all your heart? Or are you trying to walk the third road? Yeah, yeah, I can check it off the list. I participate. Hear me. You don't get to check it off the list if it's not with all your heart. Last thing to pull it all together. The initial statement that Jesus gives us to follow him. Come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Come follow me and I will change your life so you become part of the mission of God. So ready? This is A plus B equals C. So work it backwards with me. If there's no mission in your life, either he's not making or you're not following. It's the only two conclusions that can be drawn. 
If there's no mission of God in your life, then either the maker of heaven and earth is not very good at making, or maybe I'm not really actually following. So, have you been living on mission with Jesus? Have you been serving, building, and inviting? Maybe you have, and maybe you haven't. But regardless of where you're at, I believe that God has a next step for every one of us to grow in those areas. So let's turn to our tables and talk about it.